This is the Deerfield Conservation Committee meeting for September 24th, 2020. And present is Louis Mission. Tim Hilchey. Pete Law. Bill Mayor PC. Okay, let's see. We have some new business here. And I think uh, we have one for an RDA for five industrial drive. It's, uh, is Matthew here? Yep, I'm here. Okay, it's for uh, an installation of electrical vehicle charging station at Atlantic Furniture near the building. That is correct. And uh, if, if you want to just explain the project here, Matthew, it, it's all yours. Yeah, so um, basically the, the short of it is we're just looking to put two uh, EV charging stations in it, at the office area. Um, I assume everyone's kind of familiar with the location on Sunderland Road, uh, 5 Industrial Drive West. Um, so it's going to be two ports at the upper uh, circle area in front of the office building, like kind of under that large Atlantic sign. Okay, I think I think we are all familiar with the area, and uh, I hope uh, the rest of the board went by. And uh, I don't know, does anybody have any questions there for Matthew on it? Matthew, are you able to just share screen and just quickly talk through the locations and so forth? Um, Deanna, do you happen to have the um, plans up? Yeah, I've got it pulled up. Um, this is Deanna Sassarosi. I'm an environmental specialist with Eversource. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Share screen. All right, let me know if you guys can see this. Yep. yep. So here's Sunderland Road. Here's Industrial Drive. Um, this little squ square right here is the um, proposed electric vehicle charging station. Um, it's going to be one dual port charger. Um, so then this conduit goes out to a handhole ac access box. And then this is a pad mounted transformer. Um, the trench is or the excavation is going to be 48 by 72. Um, and then the trench excavation is going to be 18 inches wide. Um, this connects to a distribution pole here on Sunderland Road. Um, and this piece in Riverfront area is about um, 35 feet. So that is the, um, the trigger for this RDA. Um, what else? No soil is going to be leaving the site. It's all going to be backfilled. Um, and there is no um, tree removal. There, there, there are trees here, but they're gonna, um, the path is gonna work around the trees. So no tree removal in the riverfront area, um, just looking about 35 feet of an 18 inch excavation for this conduit in here. Okay, any, anybody uh, have any questions there? Peter or Bill or? Tim, no. Uh, Bill Mayor, PC. No, I don't have any questions. I, I think it's quite clear. Yeah, same here, Louis. I read through the um, RDA and I drove by the other day, so I'm I'm, I'm good. And uh, okay, uh, I, I I did talk. Oh, go ahead, Tim. No, go ahead, Louis. I I did talk with Mark Stinson with DEP, and you know he has. He, he looked at the RDA and really didn't have any concerns with it because of the fact that it's only 35 feet into the, uh, you know, riverfront area. And, okay. uh, What's that? So, Thank you. So in the riverfront area, the 35 feet. Okay. I'm Okay, Louis, um, Tim Hilchey, uh, yeah. I, I've looked at the documentation as well, and I, I know the site location, and I don't have any issues. Okay. 
And, uh, but I, uh, I would uh, propose a, to sign a negative number two for this uh, project. It is in the, uh, in an area to, for protection. That would be cool to see you once in a while, if I'm still there. And let's see. So I, I say we uh, vote on a negative number two, which. Tim reached out to me 15 minutes ago looking for another way to get a hold of you. Who's, who's talking? Can you? Can no, you uh, sorry, Nick iPad, could you please mute? Yeah, muted. It looks like it is muted. I was going to bring up the same. Sorry, okay. everyone. I didn't realize my iPad started unmuted. Sorry about that. So the negative number two would be the work described in the request is within an area subject to protection under the act but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, as said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent. I'll second that motion, Louie. Thank you. All, all those in favor? Louie Mission, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Pete Law, aye. Bill Marapc, aye. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank I'm Matthew. Watching. Matthew. Thanks, Louis. Oh shit. Yeah, and, and oh, what, crap. Ab what about that other? There's not a thing that I can't listen with earphones with this. Denise, Denise Mason, could you please mute? Shit. <laughs> Matthew. Yeah. 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 Uh, what, what about that other RDA that we talked about? So I got with uh, with Dan on that at GZA, and he submitted the RDA to uh, the town uh, this afternoon. So you should have it. If you have not seen it already, you will shortly. Okay, that, that's good. We'll 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 be putting it on the uh, next next month's meeting. Okay, very good. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Night. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have a. Uh, Louis. Yes. This is Jen. I just want to make um, an announcement that if it's Jennifer, I'm not. My video's not on. Um, if you want to make a comment, wait for the chair, Louie, to um, open it up for comment. And if you're calling on your phone, please use star nine to raise your hand. Star nine will also lower your hand. Um, if you are muting yourself, if you're calling in, you could do star six and that mutes and unmutes yourself. Um, but just wait until Louie opens up for comment from people, please. Thank you. Okay, we have a RDA for our water main replacement along 5 and 10 in uh, north, north of the uh, entrance to Old Deerfield headed to Keats Road. And is anybody from the water district here? Or? Uh, good evening. Uh yeah, this is Amarius Jetrikowski. I'm the uh, engineer for the project. I'm a professional engineer in the state of Massachusetts. I also have Rick Rains here on, a, on the online who's going to help go through the plans. Okay. Uh, it's, it's all yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, so again, this is an RDA for the water main replacement on Greenfield Road. Uh, so again, I'll talk about the need for the project. And then I will turn it over to Rick Cranes from also from Wright Pierce uh, to discuss some more technical uh, routing of the water main and we can uh, show the plans, uh, share the plans to the Zoom meeting. Uh, so just a little background on the project. Uh, Wright Pierce um, has been retained uh, by the Durfield Fire District in 2019 uh, to evaluate 
uh, dirty water complaints uh, along the existing N inch uh, dead end water main on Greenfield Road. Um, so the existing uh, water main is pretty old. It's a, uh, it, it's a six inch cast iron main that was installed in 1948. Um, it was determined it had a lot of water main breaks uh, from you know when it was installed to the present time. You know it was also determined it was severely tubercreated. There's a lot of deposits, iron deposits inside the main. Again, because it's a dead end main, there's not a lot of flow going through the line. The flow can only go into the main from one direction, so there's not a, not a lot of velocity coming through. So over the time, over the last you know 50, 60 years, a lot of iron deposits and you know corrosion accumulate inside that pipe. Um, so part of the project is to really improve the water quality, but also to improve the fire protection for those residents. Uh, there's about 25 residents along that stretch of the, of the water main. Um, and then, you know, starting basically in June of 2018, you know, there were several, many, many uh, water complaints that were received, you know, despite, you know, the, the Deerfield Fire District conducting, you know, semi-annual water flushing exercises. So, you know, if there was a complaint that would go out and flush the water main, they open up a hydrant and flush the water main to get the dirtier water out, but that didn't work. So, so, so there were multiple complaints we see from number 612 Greenfield Road. Uh, so this is uh, owned by the Deerfield Academy, which I think owes five homes uh, in this section of the, of the water main. There was also complaints from a resident at number 620 on Greenfield Road. Uh, he called the Deerfield Fire District and he would explain to them that he would run his tap water through a white cloth, creating a sort of filter. And then only after a short time, that cloth become uh, red tinged and have small grains of particles of similar to rust. Uh, in, in March, uh, there were four complaints in March of 2019. So on March 15, there was a complaint from uh, number uh, 616 Greenfield Road. Uh, on March 20th, there was a complaint uh, from uh, 600 Greenfield Road. March 22nd, another complaint from uh, 606 Greenfield Road. And on March 29th, uh, there was another complaint for 620 Greenfield Road. And none of those complaints are documented uh, on a file with the Deerfield uh, Fire District. Uh, so in response to those complaints, you know, obviously the, the fire district wanted to investigate, you know, what was the cause of the dirty water. So they've contacted, they told maybe at one point there was a, you know, leaking or broken water main. So they conducted some leak detection testing to see maybe the water main is leaking. Maybe there's some, you know, dirt getting into the water main, but there were no leaks discovered. Um, we also, uh, as part of the uh, study, we also tested the water sources. So there's one well that provides water to this area and also the water comes from the spring. So we've tested the, the water sources to make sure there was no iron or manganese deposits in the water sources coming in. And, and those tested negative had very, very low levels of iron manganese. Uh, so based on all the information that was gathered, you know, throughout the study, we determined that, you know, the colored water complaint is caused by the old, you know, water main and tuberculation inside the main, you know, iron deposits, you know, they basically just accumulate over a long, long time. And, you know, despite, you know, cleaning and, you know, flushing the water main, you know, we still can get rid of that, you know, and also the main is, you know, tuberculated. So really like the, the fire flow has been reduced because again, you know, you got a new pipe is pretty much open, but over time, you know, the pipe gets clogged up and, you know, a lot of the iron deposits grow inside of it and basically reducing its, you know, its capacity. And then, you know, if, if this was, you know, not a dead end main, maybe there'll be more flow through it, kind of clean out those deposits out of that main. But because this is a dead end main, pretty much all the deposits tend to accumulate in that main causing, causing those issues for those residents. Um, so part of the project, we also uh, uh, spoke with the MassDEP um, and they determined that this project is defined as tier three and uh, you know, it needs to address water quality conditions as a result of the secondary maximum contaminant levels uh, that make the water currently provided to customer aesthetically unfit to drink and, you know, some of the residents are using bottled water because they can't really, you know, they can't really, really use that water to, to drink or to do any laundry. Um, so based on our discussions and the studies, you know, it was determined that the best, you know, way to, to really resolve this problem would be to, to go ahead and replace that old water main with the new water main uh, as part of the project. And um, so just in general, and Rick is gonna go uh, through the plans, but in just in general, the work under this project includes installation of approximately 3,400 linear feet of uh, new eight inch 
uh, uh, HDP replacement water main along approximately 4,200 uh, feet of Greenfield Road, routes five and 10. Uh, from approximately 1,200 feet south of Greenfield Road, Old Main intersection, north to Keats Road. Um, the replacement of the water main, which is uh, very important to note, is that the new water main will be installed in the same trench as the existing water main. Again, being within you know the 100 feet of, of wetlands and trying to minimize you know the impacts to the wetlands and, and the soils around it. So you know we're going to be installing that water main within the existing trench that the existing water line is to minimize any impacts to the surrounding areas. Um, so part of this work also includes you know relocation you know of the existing services you know from the old main to the new main, um, installation of some valves, uh, hydrants. Um, there's going to be restoration of public uh, and utility easements. Uh, we're going to provide temporary water. Uh, for those uh, residents and also to really mitigate or really avoid any disturbance to uh, there's one wetland crossing we'll be utilizing a directional drilling so we'll be basically putting the pipe under the wetland we're not going to be doing any open cut uh, excavation to really minimize any any impacts or, or disturbance to to this wetland area um, and now I can turn it over to Rick Kranz and I'll try to share my screen so everybody could see uh, what the project looks like here. So let me just see if I can do this. Okay, let me just go. Um, hopefully everybody could see the, the drawings. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> yep, I see them. Okay. So let me know, Rick, when you need to move down and up. Sure, sure. Okay, um, like um, Maurice had said, we are within the 100 foot buffer for the entire length because there's a wetlands on the west side of the road. And we're about 80 feet away from that wetlands. This purple line is, the, um, is basically where our line is, but we'll go sheet by sheet and, um, and we can look at particular areas. Um, so in this, in this upper view, um, we do go by, uh, we do go through a drainage swale, which is not a wetlands, and uh, we are protecting this swale with a uh, hay bale check dam and a uh, silt, silt fence just to uh, protect anything from going through the pipe to the wetlands. Okay, now on the uh, move down, Marius, to the second, to the um, bottom view. Um, bottom view, we have, there is, there are no, um, there are no wetlands in this bottom view at, at all, okay? Okay, Marius, let's go to the next sheet. There's only four sheets, so it won't be, won't be too bad. Um, okay, again, over here, we have in, in, the, in the top left, um, the wetlands, those are the wetlands that are on the west side of the road. This is where Old Main Street comes in. And um, the wetlands is the red line there. And what we're gonna be putting in is, um, is uh, hay bales and a silt fence at the paved waterway, again, to protect the wetlands. The only excavation here is at, the, um, is at this uh, directional drilling pit. Um, it's, a eight, it's a four by eight pit, so it's a minor excavation. And then, um, it, and then we're gonna be doing the directional drilling across the road to the other side. So there is no open cut in the road. There's no open cuts in any road except for this one pit here. Um, okay, in, in the same view, as we go to the right of the sheet, um, there is another wetlands, but we are not you know, installing new pipe here. It's uh, the existing pipe was, was replaced due to breakages in the past. So there is a wetland, Maurice, way to the right of the sheet there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we are not doing any, any work in this area, um, but the wetlands were, were flagged by the soil scientists. Okay, let's go to the next view, Marius. Okay, um, again, the uh, Marius had mentioned about the directional drilling through the wetlands in the bottom view, Marius. You see where all the right, yeah, over there, yeah. And again, we have two, two pits, a four by six and a four by eight. And um, we will be directional drilling underneath the wetlands so we don't disturb the wetlands at all. Uh, we, to protect the wetlands, though, we do put in um, uh, silt, silt fencing um, just because of the pits. It, it'll, it'll contain any of the excavation silt. Um, 
Okay, let's go down to the next one there, Marius. Next sheet. Uh, the top view. Oh, this one here? Yeah, yep, the top view. Again, on, on the right, there is a drainage swale, which we are open cutting. It is not designated wetlands, but we are protecting it with um, a hay bale check dam and silt fence. Okay. Oh, another thing to mention, all the catch basins along the route get silt, silt sacks. So any, any dirt that maybe falls out of a truck or uh, runs down will get caught in a silt sack, which do get removed at the end of the project. Okay, let's go down to the next view now, Marius. Um, here, there is no wetlands in, in this view at all. And to the right of the sheet, uh, we have no work there because it's an existing, um, they replaced this pipe already due to breakage. And to the final sheet. Okay, um, again, you can see the wetlands on the east, on the west side of the road, that entire strip is wetlands. But here is where the existing water main crosses the road and we will be directional drilling across the road, protecting the wetlands with um, uh, with silt, silt fence and also um, in, the, in the bottom part of that view there's another little wetlands down there and again we're not cutting through there but we're uh, silt fencing around it. Um, and then, then the bottom view Marius is again wetlands on the west side of the road. Um, this is where our water main ends and we will be protecting the wetlands with uh, silt fence in this area. And um, yeah, that goes through all four sheets. Then Rick, can you talk about the, the size of the trench? Uh, the, 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 well, the trench, depending on the size box they use, would be maximum five foot wide, but they like to go, they will probably go with a skinnier box. There is, there will be no rock in the area because it's an existing water main, but the trench, let's say the trench is five feet wide. Uh, it's all in grassed areas or paved driveways, which they will fix the uh, driveway aprons. Um, and the trench is six feet deep. And then again, just to emphasize, you know, we are installing, you know, the, the new water main within the existing trench <coughs> of the existing water main. So we're not really taking up any more of the, you know, of the upland area from the wetlands. So we're trying to stay within the existing, you know, uh, trench. We absolutely yeah, we, want to minimize any 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 problems with the wetlands and and customers. And then you know during this project, you know uh, uh, Deerfield Fire District uh, would have right peers, you know us basically doing a full time inspection of the project. So typically, what we what we do on daily basis, you know we before any any work starts on a project like this, we would go around and inspect you know all the siltation fences, you know make sure everything is in place and installed by the contractor you know, before he, you know, gets permission to get started, you know, we would do this on a daily basis to make sure that all the, all the protections are in place, you know, prior to the contract starting the work, you know, if there's anything that, you know, really doesn't, you know, look right per the plans, you know, we would have actually, you know, ask the contractor to fix it before he gets start, start working. So, you know, we'll be there all the time to monitor his, you know, construction activities and, you know, making sure that, you know, all the, all the measures to protect, you know, the existing wetlands and, you know, and, you know, are, are in place on a daily basis. And then the construction of this project right now, you know, looks like the Adelphia Fire District would like to go out to bid, you know, this fall and possibly, you know, start the work on next year sometime. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question on the uh, trenching. Now, is that going to be backfilled daily? Yes. Uh, how is yes. that going to be worked? It is backfilled daily. Um, okay. We will not leave any open trenches. Um, a lot of times, if it was in the road, you would plate over the end of the trench. Um, right. No, we no. There's there's a danger involved leaving it open. There's no reason to leave it open. Um, it will get backfilled daily. Okay. So that that Absolutely. just minimizes the uh, siltation and stuff. If with piles of dirt still around and everything. Right. 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 Okay. Uh, does the board have any uh, questions here on this project? Hi, Louis. Bill Mayer, PC. Hi, Bill. That actually was going to be my my question. I wasn't sure if uh, it was going to be left open. 
and that you know obviously be safety concerns there too. So okay. um, I don't have any further concerns. Um, Louis, uh, yes. Tim <clears throat> uh, I wanted to just ask um, all the um, <clears throat> the uh, below ground drilling that's going to does it create um, soil is and is that soil then removed and taken away? Yes. That soil is removed and taken away. That is correct because it is replaced by the pipe. It is taken away. Okay. Okay. Does anybody out in the audience have any questions on this? I can't, let's see. Yes, everybody's happy here. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I don't know if it, uh, the members got that late email I sent out on this uh, on uh, utilities from DEP. Uh, Bill Mayor PC. I'm not sure that I'm. I know what the late email is. Well, today, late, late this afternoon, it's on the uh, exemptions for uh, utility work like this. I think there was something. Okay, I, I see it now. I see it now. Louie, could I ask the uh, applicant to unshare their screen at this point unless anyone else needs to see it? Thank you. Okay. So I talked with Mark about this also, and uh, he uh, he seems like it was he was happy with the plans. They look good, and uh, everything was there. And he did send that that uh, paperwork there about the uh, compliance and the exemptions. So. Uh, which means, uh, let's see, just for people out there. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Louis, this is Pete Law. I was just trying to search for it. I know I read it this afternoon. And can you just go through that language real quick? Yeah, I'm just I'm looking for it now. All right, thank you. So, Louis, yeah. Bill, Bill Mayer, PC. I have it in front of me. Um, if you'd like me to read it. Okay. You, yeah, it's fine. I got it here now too. So, you you, you can read it, Bill. I'll okay. Like all right, so Mark Stinson um, of the Department of Environmental Protection uh, made a recommendation that the Deerfield Conservation Commission uh, um, uh, could uh, consider uh, exemption I uh, for this, um, uh, this work. Um, uh, and it reads, installation of underground utilities, for example, electric, gas, water, within existing paved or unpaved roadways and private roadways slash driveways, provided that all work is conducted within the roadway or driveway and that all trenches are closed at the completion of each workday. Thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. So what that does is that, that would be, uh, if we agree and uh, I would, uh, propose a uh, negative number five, which is the error described in the request is subject to protection under the act. Since the work described therein meets the requirements for the following exemption as specified in the act and the regulations, no notice of intent is required. So under that, we would uh, put that this complies with the item 310, the Act 310, CMR 10.02, parentheses 2, parentheses B, 2I. So, anybody wants to second that or any? Um, 
Louis Alex, oh, second motion. This is Tim Ilchi. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, Louis Mission, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Yeah, Pete Law, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. Okay, I, I think, uh, gentlemen, uh, we're, we should be all set with your water main. We'll get right. that paper, we'll get that RDA signed off and uh, sent to you. Great. Well, thank you very much, uh, all the commissioners. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And good night. Kevin, good night. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now we have some uh, old business that was continued from uh, last, last month's meeting. And that's the RDA for a uh, for the lot up at routes five and ten in Mill Village. So I guess we have uh, uh, Chad Brubaker is here to talk to us and Mark Donahue. I guess Mark, uh, we we don't have anything yet. We haven't, I guess we're working on getting a peer review uh, proposal sent out. So uh, I guess you did send something to us earlier today, Mark. Do you want to talk about that or? Uh, sure, Mr. Chairman, with, with your permission. Um, I guess two things. First of all, what I sent you uh, to the commission uh, uh, today was a copy of an administrative decision of DEP on an analogous case, um, the so-called pyramid case out of the um, Hadley Mall. Uh, and it's relevant to the situation here in that uh, much like um, has, was discussed and as DePinto reviewed with you in detail, that there are wetland species on the site, um, but they don't constitute uh, a resource area because they're not touching uh, a stream or any uh, a other good. So what Pyramid does is talk about what a stream is uh, and helps give color to the need for a definitive channel and not just the moving of grass as was demonstrated in the video uh, of the abutters in the last meeting. Uh, and also makes it clear that the artificial in that case, concrete um, uh, spillway, and in here, the catch basin, uh, is a break. And so to the extent there was an argument that it was all connected to Bloody Brook, Pyramid stands for directly the opposite finding in any type of fashion. So, um, you know, when we ended this meeting uh, after a fairly lengthy meeting back on August 27th uh, and talked about peer review, <clears throat> we talked about it, it trying to um, get this moving uh, in a meaningful fashion. Um, and we talked, in fact, specifically about two peer review consultants that the town has used in the past. You indicated that your commission has experience with GZA, and we pointed out that Ty and Bond <clears throat> had previously done peer review of this, of the project, and uh, we can all be candid enough with each other that this is not about wetlands, but is about the project. Um, and had previously done that for the town. Um, and so we're both surprised and candidly very disappointed that no. no contact to the best of our knowledge has either been made with those firms or anybody else. And so it feels like we are uh, bog bogged down. Uh, I'm not sure who else is speaking, but it'd be kind to you to thank you. Um, um, you know, we'd, we're not... <clears throat> based upon the, the information that we provided from Pyramid, based upon, frankly, Mr. Pinto's uh, testimony to the commission last time, which she's glad to try to summarize it, will help you try to remember. We think the commission has enough to make a determination this evening. Okay. Uh, let's see, how do we go about this? You know, I, I, I looked at the lot way back. Louie? Yes? Um, Casey's had her hand raised. I don't know if she, if you want to comment. 
Okay, where's where's Casey? Casey, you, you, go ahead. Where's? Oh, well, she seems to be off now. I don't know what happened. Sorry, sorry about that. Well, Had her hand raised. Okay. Yeah, I. I was uh, one of the members there that we uh, looked at the lot last. Oh, back in 2016, I believe it is. And, you know, our ruling then was we didn't see any wetland issues there. And to, to tell you the truth, I've been on for 23 years and I still, I, I, I don't see any issues on that lot myself. But we have other board members here that they, they have other uh, ideas or comments. Uh, I'd like to hear from any of the yeah. other members. Hi, uh, Louis, Bill Mayer, PC. Um, I was not on the commission uh, at that time. And um, I have, my one desire is to follow the science uh, uh, in, this, um, uh, in this review. Um, at the end of a very lengthy conversation, uh, we agreed for a neutral third party peer review. Um, I, I'm not sure, I can't speak to, you know, the process of why such was not completed um, within the three to four weeks that um, from this meeting, from last meeting to this meeting. Um, I do think that the uh, members in the last meeting um, that they expressed enough concern um, uh, based on what Ms. DePinto had to say and what Ms. Bednaz had to say, that having a, um, a, peer, a, a neutral peer review um, completed is the best way forward. I, I really don't think that, uh, that we should go by, I mean, we're not in a court of law at this point. We are a conservation commission. Uh, uh, we should not go by what has been presented as precedents from Newton. Uh, we should go by what the science tells us about this lot in Deerfield, Massachusetts. Um, I don't believe that, that this commission um, should talk further uh, about and deliberate on making a decision um, unless the client would like to go take this further and just go straight to DEP. And uh, though we don't make that decision, um, uh, they do. Um, so um, I guess my, you know, following what the client asked the last time, I, I would like to uh, follow the science um, uh, and follow our our agenda. Um, our agenda being to um, deliberate the terms of an RFQ um, and uh, resolve that at this meeting. Thank you, Bill. Louis yeah. Tim Hill, she could I be recognized? Yes. Um, it looks like Casey Warren is back on and maybe she wants to make a comment about uh, my understanding is that she was she was involved in writing the draft RFQ that we've received. So if she wants to speak, I suggest you recognize her. Hey, Casey, you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. So I sat through last the last meeting and you all voted to obtain peer review. Um, two things were challenging. First of all, I did not see a policy on peer review, a peer review process under chapter 44, section 53G. Um, although I recall discussing that with Steve Barrett many years ago. Second, when you send out anything for review, any kind of um, request for information, that request, and this is based on a procurement perspective, um, that request should carry the information that allows you to get the best 
answer back, which means it has to be consistent, it has to be factual, and it has to be uh, uniform across the board. So those things are in play. And I did check with some of my peers. In fact, I contacted Shootsbury um, to see what they had for their consultants policy and get a flavor of just the peer review process for an RDA of this nature. So I used the information that was available, i.e. if you look at the RFQ, um, the information about the RDA submission. I, because the town has experienced issues in the past with contracts, I supplied the town's contract so that anybody that provides a quote knows what they'll be signing. And this is a contract with the town to conduct the peer review. So you'll see those elements in that RFQ and the RFQ is online in case anybody wants to look at it and hasn't seen it. And Louie, can I follow okay. up? Thank you, Casey. Me? Go ahead, Tim. Um, based on, <clears throat> you'll notice on the agenda that there's a um, discussion of hiring consultants and based on the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commission's form, um, which delineates um, a standard for hiring outside consultants, I circulated um, one that was specifically written for Deerfield Conservation Commission. And it basically follows uh, what's been accepted as a um, a policy that Shootsbury has a very similar policy. I, I suspect that if we went through Massachusetts, we'd find a lot of them having the same policy. Um, I shared that with all the commissioners. I don't know if they had a chuck, an opportunity to read it. Um, I think that it could provide a way forward that would be, would speed up the process for the applicant and would allow us to get an independent reading of what the science is. Um, I've looked at the, uh, the RFQ draft that uh, Casey spoke about earlier, and it basically um, strips out all of the information that was presented by um, Freshwater of Wetland Services. Uh, it leaves only Mary DePinto's work, Mary Ann DePinto's work um, to be reviewed. And most of my questions um, from the last meeting still hold. And it's uh, the, the question being, is there a wetland resource area that's larger and encompasses part of the development site? And um, without, with the, with the only thing that can be reviewed is um, uh, the, the Three Oaks environmental piece of paper, it would seem to me to be a waste of the applicant's money and our time because we've already read that. And what we wanna know is, are there, um, are there issues that would lead us to conclude that there is a jurisdictional wetland in the site? Um, and um, Attorney Donahue, uh, I, I was forwarded whatever he sent to the town at about 2.30 this afternoon. The Pyramid, um, the pyramid Mall, um, recapitulation that's from Westlaw. And I came away with a totally different reading of it. Um, number one, Pyramid talks about a developed site that was developed in the 70s. Um, and we're talking about an undeveloped farm field. And so the other thing that I thought uh, was, I, I don't see how, I mean, I'm not a lawyer and I'm, I'm just saying I, I've had a very short time with this. The other thing I took away from this is that this was a, a split decision ruling. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in one instance, um, they sided with uh, the applicant saying that one of these two detention ponds that were both identified as that, you know, having wetlands uh, around them, one of them was said, yes, it, it wasn't because of <laughs> factors of law. However, the judge, the final uh, appeals judge who ruled on this, um, what is it, superseding determination of applicability, 
and then um, issued a, trying to get these words correct, uh, an RFD, which um, I'm not sure exactly, uh, I guess it's the final determination. Um, he, he found that a lot of the things that we were discussing in the last meeting, what is a bank channel? Um, what constitutes a channel? Some of those things seem to have clarified this to me. And if I can um, call up um, the, the photographs that Mr. Donahue references and share my screen, um, I want to specifically talk about some of this in light of this, this legal brief that he sent us at the last minute. Um, so let me see. Um, I think this is the correct thing that I'm going to share. Is it allowed? Okay, let me click share. Okay, yeah, so this is the, uh, this is the report that has photographs in it. And since it's the only thing that we have with photographic evidence, I, I'm gonna refer to it. Um, let me get to the pictures. Sorry, I just don't wanna scroll too far fast because sometimes uh, that causes its own set of issues. So in, in, uh, Kate, in, in, in uh, the Freshwater Wetland Services report that we received, Image one is from March of this year, and it shows water flowing from the area that we've been discussing in the right of way. And it's a regular channel. And then over on the photograph two from taken from 2018, we see water flowing in the same channel. Um, then we see in photograph three taken in uh, July of this year, water flowing from that area through the same channel going to the culvert. And um, then we see another image from later in July where you can see um, in photograph five that it's flowing through the same channel. And, you know, we're in the middle of a drought, so we're seeing excuse, water excuse flowing. Me, through Tim? Excuse, excuse me, Tim? Excuse me? Excuse me, like I said before, I'm, I'm not for or against all this. I'm not either, but uh, I'm just I'm just trying to understand it. So I want to. Yeah, but I, I explained that a lot of these photos were taken and I looked it up because I was curious. Right. It, it, it is a drainage swale and it's supposed to do what it's doing. And on the 720 number five photograph, it said that we had heavy rain in Massachusetts from uh, from that day, and you can see the roadway is wet. Louis, can, oh. can you let me speak continuously okay. and not interrupt me so I can make my point? Okay. I, I, I just want the commission to do the correct thing. And so I'm just trying to understand what I, what I read from this pyramid case is that there is no set definition, but I'm trying to illustrate that this looks like, uh, to me, a regularly defined channel where water flows when uh, the situation arises where water is going to flow in an inter intermittent stream. Intermittent streams flow intermittently because they have to have sufficient water in order to be activated. So that could be a rain event, it could be snow melt, it could be any number of things, and I'm not trying to define what those are. Next thing is, um, we have a letter from the Department of Transportation that says that that culvert flows underground to the Bloody Brook, which is would, would constitute making it a jurisdictional issue. The next thing is we have um, images from the site which have what's been called a bank or a swale in photograph 11. And it flows from the area that we've, we've, we've been identified with it, that uh, Three Oaks Environmental is identified as the Northeast corner where there are wetlands plants and hydrology. So we have this channel and then um, I think that's all the photographic stuff. The, the rest of these are like plants. So the reason I shared this is just so that I can uh, discuss because now in a brief look at this, um, this, I don't know, 25 page uh, summary, there were several points where um, 
the judge um, makes points that, um, let's see. Okay, so on page five, it, it's talking about the specifics of the case, but it's got some general information that I think is germane. Um, the finding that the channel was not a stream was premised on the mistaken conclusion that the stream cannot begin in a culvert that borders and flows out of a border, bordering vegetated wetland. It also talks about, um, let's see, water exiting the culvert was directly contacting the water column in the downstream jurisdictional intermittent stream. Um, so there's a lot of language in this thing which seems to suggest that the, um, that this in photograph 11 is a bank or a stream that flows as photograph 12 shows, water flows through there. This channel connects to the very middle of what we are considering as possible vegetated wetland in the right of way. This, it comes down right into the water area right about here. Um, so that's a, another point of connectivity. So what's the point of all this discussion? Last time we had three members who had concerns about this area because it's not an isolated thing. If you carve off one piece of land from everything and say you can only consider what's in this border, then you would have to conclude one thing perhaps. But if you say, this is part of a whole system, then you would come to a different conclusion. And I believe that when you made the determination in 2016, there was a forest here. And I could understand why you might not see wetland areas that were elsewhere, because I think you also said in that finding that there was no wetlands evident in the area. So my suggestion for us is to adopt a policy of hiring an independent consultant, hire an independent consultant. The, 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 the consultant would then be at our discretion to go out and investigate the resource, the wetlands resource, resources in that area and to compare or to consider both the Three Oaks environmental reports and perhaps the uh, early report that the applicant pr provided, and also the freshwater wetland services reports, and then come back to us. Now, the advantage of this uh, hiring policy is we don't have to wait around, we can go out and hire, and uh, we just need to come up with a list of the things we want questions answered for. And so that's, that's what I think we should do. And I'm going to unshare my screen if I can figure out how to do this. Stop share. There we go. The, if, if I could speak, Chairman. Yes. Yes, Marianne. The, uh, that Pyramid Mall, the lengthy uh, decision, uh, the focus that you need to really hone in on is the definition of the stream as being having definite banks and land in the water and the definition of touching the bordering vegetative wetland must continuously be touching a resource area to be bordering there is wetland there it's isolated and it's isolated by virtue of the fact there is no stream channel that connects it directly to that uh culvert a bloody brook um, there's a stretch, stretch of upland vegetation that's predominantly upland that separates that wetland on the site from the catch basin. The Commonwealth put in a swale to capture road runoff. So there's a swale up, upstream of, up, up the hill from the site. Um, again, that flows in response to rainfall. It is not considered a stream. It's a stormwater structure. Uh, it would not be considered a stream. It was constructed specifically to carry just stormwater. Uh, there is no connection between the wetland vegetation on the site and that catch basin you know, or Bloody Brook. And the catch basin itself is a structure that is not in that Pyramid Mall decision is not considered to be a part of a stream. A, once you have a stream and it flows through a culvert, the culvert 
is considered a part of that stream. But you first have to have the continuous bordering vegetative wetland continuously bordering on a stream channel. So there's a break, what I'm saying is a break between the wetland on the site and that catch basin. Actually, the uh, culvert. The catch basin also forms a break. So that sounds like a legal, Tim Hilchigan, that sounds like a legal question that I would certainly like our town council to give us advice on. Um, but so that we can move the process of the RDA along, I, I would like to hear what other people, other board members have to say about adopting a hiring policy so we can speed up this process and get the answers that we need on the science of the wetlands issues while maybe we have town council look at this opinion and compare it to the other opinions that uh, we've been, that have been cited for us. And uh, this, this when is I look at the connectivity question of the right of way, it doesn't look like any swale I've seen. It's a flat, flat area next to the highway. And there is high, uh, a great hybrid, a gradient, which I think is referred to in this pyramid thing, um, about water flowing down. There's no, no requirement that it be a natural thing. Anything that's constructed according to this opinion that Mr. Donahue shared with us can be part of a stream. So I'm not, a, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not saying that I know the answer to this question, but it sounds like that's a legal question. So I would like to hear what Pete Law and Bill Marapisi think about my, my proposal. Uh, Pete? Louis, this is Pete Law. Can I jump in here? Yes. Um, just a couple of things. I, I would say, first off, um, this 15 page document of the letter I got in the middle of the afternoon while I was at work and there was a 22 page attachment to it. Sorry, I was working all day. I didn't have really time to look at it and, until I would review it tonight. So I would really like to spend some more time with what this means. It was dated from um, Council Donahue today. I'm assuming it got to our office and was sent out almost immediately. Um, but I, it's too much information to review in, uh, in an afternoon and it was sent at the very last minute. Secondly, um, I would say that, and I think I, I echo, echo uh, one of the board members earlier to said we're trying to base this on science. The, this is not, we're not here uh, because of the project per se. We're here because we're trying to do our position as the Conservation Commission and looking at the science. Um, secondly, I think what Marianne has brought up tonight is interesting. I took a lot of notes on that, but it, it really drives back to me the need for a peer review because Marianne's opinion and, and, and what this looks like, and I've read this over and over again between her, um, her opinion and the freshwater wetlands opinion, and they're quite different. You know, everybody's seeing the, the same thing in a, with different with uh, different lenses on. So I, I do agree with Tim that we need to get a continue with what we decided last month with a really um, outside, independent, neutral peer review. And I think the peer review has to be as inclusive as it can be. And this will be the fourth topic that I'll talk about. Um, and it's probably not for this part of the conversation, but the request for quotes that Casey said, and thank you, Casey. Um, I question whether it is too limited in scope and that it, it, um, it refers only to the Three Oaks study, but actually it refers to the request for determination submitted by them. And as such, from a legal standpoint from the RFQ, does that then cascade to all the other uh, information that have been provided since that initial application? Um, but I think that needs to be pointed out um, uh, and to be a little bit more definitive. So um, I've been sitting back and, be, and just listening. So there's a lot of things I took notes on. There's probably others here, but those are kind of the three or four areas that, that kind of have jumped out to me this evening and um, in reading. And, I apologize, I didn't have time to go through uh, the council's uh, letter and all the details, um, but I can certainly do that. I yield.
All right. Uh, the only question I have, I, I've read, you know, your your writing there, Tim, on the uh, on doing the peer review and setting the contract and the limits there, but are I was always under the impression that the peer review would be just what the applicant had submitted and the location, not including someone else's comments on the project, which he's paying for it. My understanding is if we have a consultant and we hire him, then he's going to bring up questions to the consultants or to the applicants consultant or environmental designer. And so you're saying you should look at all this other paperwork too, but I'm not saying, I don't, I don't know how he, I thought that's what you said to include everything. Um, I'd like Pete to respond to this because he was, he brought up this point, so let him speak to it. Tim Elchie. Yeah, this, uh, this is Pete Law. This is, that was more me, Louis. It's like, I, I didn't know. When I read the request for quotes, it's very limited. Uh, and is that what we are, are held to? Um, it's just reviewing of the existing request for determination of applicability. Or do you then incorporate everything else that's been done? And if it's only to the initial request for determination of applicability, then I think we have to grant the peer review additional um, additional aspects to, to work with. And I, I jotted those down on, I think it was, maybe came from the Shootsbury one, where we can ask for specific consulting services may include, but are not limited to resource area survey, delineation, analyses, hydrogeologic and drainage analyses, impact on lands, environmental or land use laws. And this was, uh, and again, I am not a lawyer. This is what Casey sent along to us for what another conservation commission had put together for the consultation services for um, hiring outside consultants. Whether this is applicable to reviews or not, um, I, I thought that's what it was sent for. So that, that is my, my um, question is the, I guess the applicability of, of the review and the, you know, where we can or can't go um, for that request. Hey, uh, Louis, it's uh, Bill Mayer, PC, uh, and Tim, I apologize for stepping in you. I'm just wondering if, if we should also just review exactly what the um, peer review, what we, what we agreed to in the motion the last meeting, just to say that. I don't know, do we, are we all clear on, on that? Because I'm, uh, just so that we, that um, the motion that, that we made um, uh, at the, uh, Louis made motion at the applicant, applicant, applicant's expense to seek a neutral third party peer review on the question is, if this area has connectivity, connectivity to, or has wetlands and is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, so, um, I, so that that's that's what we that's what we agreed to. Um, uh, those terms are are more general than right than just a review of the RDA. Um, but I'm not sure they're more specific to now uh, a lot of the other information that's coming our way, some of which uh, uh, later, um, you know, right before this meeting. So um, I just want to make sure we're clear. Tim? Louis Tim Hilcher, yes. And actually, um, although Shootsbury has a policy that's very similar to what I sent to you, the actual language is something that was created by the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions as a form so the towns could, one of the problems that we have in this is that um, sometimes you can run into a situation where the Conservation Commission needs to make a decision about a wetland resource 
and a project might only impact a corner of that. So this allows the uh, commission to get independent information that may not be limited specifically to because the determination of whether a, a, a wetland condition exists in some place might be dependent on what's around it. So um, my feeling is that the best thing for the applicant and for the town is to adopt a policy like this and then seek the information we need in a timely fashion and um, render a decision, hopefully at the next meeting. Uh, because uh, as I see the, the scope of the, the RFQ is not what we agreed to or discussed at the last meeting and the applicants even accepted terms like the area. So um, it doesn't reflect what we voted on. So my feeling is that maybe we have a two-step process where we actually adopt a policy and going forward, this will be good for the Conservation Commission because now we will have this policy that many other towns and, and cities in the Massachusetts already have and which uh, the town administrator thought that we already had based on her previous work for the town. Um, and we won't have to confront this issue and we won't have to wonder what we can do in the future. And then subsequently, quickly turn around and hire a consultant to do this review, give us the information. They might come out and, and totally agree with everything that the applicants proposed and say, yes, this is the definitive break, et cetera. And then we would have an answer. And uh, that, that would, to me would be the best possible solution. Now, I, I have a, a question on that, just going out and hiring someone like that is, we, we have procurement laws too, that I believe we have to fulfill, right, Casey? Is Casey there? There are procurement laws um, that pertain to this type of thing. Um, there are also exclusions. So I drafted this because I remembered hearing three quotes. So I drafted that from a perspective of providing enough information for someone to give us more information. In other words, to respond to a quote request. Um, one of the reasons that you do a, a consultant's hire is it allows you to hire straight to a per, hire straight straight hire a vendor. Um, I think everybody needs to keep in mind that a peer review is done on an application. And so when you do your hire, if you do decide to accept um, a consultant's policy, which is a very good idea, um, I think it gives you a framework by which you can hire. Um, procurement law is a little bit different and there is an exception for engineering, but I don't know if it fits these circumstances. I would have to get an opinion on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is Pete Law. That's, that's a good point where you said the peer review is done on the application. Um, that was something I, did, I wanted to get clarified. The other part of this request, though, I think what we talked about, and I'm not sure if it's, it was in the, the uh, minutes of the meeting bill, but we talked about that the peer review should um, include a professional uh, wetlands uh, scientist and a, and a soil scientist um, to make sure we're gave, you know, we have the right criteria for the people that are actually doing the, the review. Hi, Peter, it's Phil Mayer, PC. Um, so I, in the, in the um, minutes as I, as I wrote them and I'm, I'm reading them again, um, So in, in, in the, uh, I mean, I don't, I, I did not reference, you know, specific professionals that, that had to be uh, as part of the peer review. Um, uh, I referenced um, that, you know, uh, um, several commission members, uh, you know, uh, questioned, you know, the, the uh, connectivity and whether there are bordering wetland vegetations on the area 
of Lot 29 slash 30 Mill Village Road, the applicant was asked if they would accept a neutral third party peer review to determine if this area has connectivity to or has wetlands and is subject to the Wetland Protection Act. Um, at that point um, uh, is when our motion uh, was made. Uh, okay. To, to hey, Mark, see I, oh, excuse me, Pete. I see Mark, he's been trying to uh, raise his hand there. Mark? Thank you. Um, or some of what I was going to say has already been covered by others, but I, I think what you're talking about as far as peer review, a couple of points. Um, I, I would urge the commission as a matter of policy to establish a methodology by which if you're going to have peer review, you first understand what it is, and second, there's a way to implement it. Um, it's, it's clear that the last month has been wasted um, because we're no closer to it and apparently no closer to the commission even agreeing on what it's going to be. Second, it's clear to me that of the four members that are participating in this hearing this evening, um, Mr. Hilchey's already made up his mind as to how he's going to go based upon his review of the freshwater report that he just walked you through. And I find it hard to imagine that the peer review, if done correctly, is going to change any of that in any fashion. And I note, because I think it's important that at least two members of this commission have spoken uh, in opposition to the project that it is related to in the past in the public forum. So um, we were willing to go along. We didn't, you know, re remember that whatever's in your minutes wasn't made as part of our drafting of the motion. That was your commission working on trying to come up with something that nothing happened on. Um, and we're prepared to uh, rise or fall based upon the record that's before us right now. Louis, can I be recognized? Yeah. Yes, Tim. Uh, first, I'd like to say that um, I don't agree with Mr. Donahue's representation of my uh, decision-making powers. I've said from the beginning that I'm perfectly happy to be guided by the science and that I want this to be done in a proper fashion so that um, the board for the town's sake is making the right decision. Uh, the connectivity question to me is central because it does affect the Bloody Brook. The Bloody Brook is a major issue in town. It's been a major issue in town for as long as I've been in the area. And so that's a major concern for me. If the science comes back and says there's no connectivity, then end of story. I, I'm not gonna vote against um, the science of the project. So um, I, I don't think it's productive for people to suggest what the motives of other people are um, because they don't know each other. Okay, is it, any other comments out there? Casey, have anything there? Can I ask a question? You may. Um, so peer review is one thing. It's, it's a review of the application, the way I understand it. And I checked with several colleagues about that. I'm not a lawyer, but I did check. Um, on the other hand, review of the science is a different thing. That It sounds to me like several members of Conservation Commission would like to see a broader view of impacts. That's not something that I, as a lay person, would see as part of a peer review. On the other hand, um, if the Conservation Commission wanted to pursue that, I'm sure there's a way to do that. I'd certainly be willing to help you figure that out. It's just, it doesn't, it, it sort of seems like I'm hearing an apples to oranges kind of discussion. And I just wanted to ask everybody if that's in fact what I'm hearing. Peer review is one thing. Review of the science related to not only that piece of property, but its impacts around that piece of property may be outside the purview of a peer review. So I'm just trying to clarify for myself. Yes, yeah, so Louis, can yes. I be recognized again? Yes, Tim. Um, I think one of the reasons why there is this issue is because at the last meeting, you were the person to suggest peer review, and I don't think any of us were looking for peer review necessarily at that moment. 
and we were looking to understand what is the science of the, the wetlands, possible wetlands resources in that area. So uh, to, to maybe to bring the meeting to a close, you know, this suggestion was put forward. We made some suggestions about what should be reviewed and apparently Casey Warren in, in reviewing things has come to a conclusion that peer review is not what we, what we, uh, we, we were asking for. We were asking for something that maybe is not peer review, but be that as it may, um, I do think that um, adopting a hiring outside consultants policy is something that we can do tonight. And whatever else we decide to do, um, that is something that will help us going forward. So that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. Hey, Louis, Pete Law, uh, if I can be recognized. Um, yes, Pete. Casey, I think you summarized it very well. <laughs> so thank you for that. But I think that is the difference. And that's why I was asking earlier, what is the applicability of the peer review? And the way it was written up, it was only to the, the, uh, the uh, RDA um, that was submitted by Three Oaks. Um, and, and what we have been presented as a commission in the past is uh, the Three Oaks study and uh, uh, another study that was freshwater wetlands study that were pretty much, there's some, uh, some similarities, but it certainly came to a different conclusion. So I, I think what we were actually looking for is, is how do we find the, the neutral party that can, um, can review can review the science and, and look at it. So maybe we've gotten caught up in, in the, um, the nomenclature here and, and maybe not asking for the right thing. So I, I thank you, Casey, for your, for your input there because that really kind of clarified it for me. Well, as it, as it stands right now that I know of that we were gonna try to get it out for review a peer review there, the RDA, and the, the, the whole area there. I mean, that's, maybe it's too general, but a, a peer review, by hiring somebody, he is going to look at everything. That's, that's the way it's always been. It's not just he's going to look at one little thing. He's going to look at the whole lot. He's going to look and, and do as if it was an RDA for somebody else. So I, I really don't... But, but wouldn't that, see any need to change it, that's all. I guess my question, Louis, is, is would the peer review be only upon the application that was submitted and exclude all of the other information that we've been looking at the last few months? Uh, other information, uh, it, it'd be just for that RDA. Yeah, so that, I mean, n nothing's saying that other, that other information is correct or incorrect. Right, but it we're, we're, we're there to, it doesn't my play. understanding is we're there to review that lot, the issues with it. And if they come up with, there's nothing there, then, then that'll be it. But if they do come up with something, then it would be continued because they would have to go for either, if it was that, uh, if it if it uh, is wetlands there and everything else, then uh, they would have to file a notice of intent, which would be more of an in-depth review of everything then. But right now, it's basically what we've always done was, uh, you know, have a peer review of that RDA or it will do a peer review of a notice of intent too. So I, I really don't no, if you can, uh, you know, assume somebody else's reports are incorrect or correct, you know, you have to, you have to just look at that area there, not comments on everybody else. This isn't like a planning or zoning, you know, this is kind of straightforward. That, that's all I got to say. I, I don't know. Um, Louis Bill Mayer, PC. Um, I, I just wanted kind of go back to, um, uh, you know, I'm make sure I'm understanding, uh, because I, I actually I do agree that the um, with you, 
the peer review um, on this RDA with the minutes that we agreed to, the motion that we agreed to, um, uh, would be um, uh, within this RDA, uh, uh, is this, does this area, lot, 120, uh, lot 29 and 30, um, does this area have connectivity to or has wetlands and is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act? Um, I, I too, I, I can't, I, I can't make an assumption. Um, I mean, that's what the peer uh, review is going to do. That's, uh, I agree with you, Bill. Uh, it's, um, you know, if it's, if they find that it is, then there is, then you, you take it a next step. But if there isn't, you can't just assume from no. another reporter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and please don't think I'm making assumptions at all, because that's the last thing I would do. But the questions have been raised. So if I was reviewing something on just one piece of data, then I'm going to review that data versus I'm going and then not exclude all the rest of the information that's out there. And less in the requests for quotes, we give that um, individual, that company, a little bit more latitude to look at things. But if we're by law held to the application for review on a peer review, and then that's what we're held to. And that was unclear until, and I think uh, Casey may have just cleared that up for me, that we might be limited to that from a peer review standpoint. Um, I have a comment from the public if you want, Louie. Yeah, okay, who's, Nick? Oh, Nick? Yeah. Is it Nick? I just wanted to say that the other boards that are dealing with this development group have a uh, legal aid with them to talk. You guys seem to be taking a lot of directive from Mark Donahue, who's giving you his take on the legal rights that you guys have as a board. And you guys really need to have your own representation there because these guys are known to go after any board that disagrees with what they state as fact. So I would recommend that you guys have your own legal advisor tell you what you have the right to do and not listen to Mr. Donahue's views or spin on what he says you legally have the right to look at. Thank you. No, I don't think, I don't think, you know, we're, it's, it's pretty straightforward for us. It's, it's not listening to, you know, listen to Mark, of course. And, uh, we're supposed to take everything in under advisement, but when it comes down to it, it's, it's, you know, they have a request in and we question the results, the board does. And so we're allowed to put it out for a peer review and it's pretty straightforward. That's what should be done. The board wanted that. And that's, that's the way we're going to go. We get carried away here with some other things, but, but uh, you know, I think we, we just have to go through and go through the process the, with uh, Casey help and the town council for the procurement of uh, a third party review. I, I don't know what else to say. You know, Mark? Um, you know, I, I think this, this confusion or um, uh, alternative focus on what constitutes peer review uh, does not bode well for the way this process is going. Um, I, I can't tell the future. If I could, I wouldn't be on a Zoom call at 8.15 at night. Um, but I can see that if we went down this road, um, some peer review consultant is going to come in and look at Ms. DePinto's report and say what they're going to say. And Ms. Bidnow is going to issue another report pointing out the errors of the peer review. And the board's going to be equally in a morass as to what to do and what to listen to. Um, and so, you know, if, if we're looking for somebody objective, frankly, you know, the most objective party is DEP. Well, maybe that's, I, maybe. 
Okay. Because, you know, it, it, it was represented before that your, that your commission had familiarity with doing peer review, that you had done the exercise before. We've now spent almost 50 minutes with different philosophical concepts of what constitutes peer review. I, I don't know what's even gonna come out of this process anymore, but it's certainly not gonna happen fast. Um, it's not gonna be definitive for the commission. It's pretty clear to me in that regard. Um, and so um, I, I respect all the time and effort you put into this, but you know, with the applicant thinks we've provided a compelling case based upon Ms. DePinto's report based upon pyramid you don't have to vote it tonight you can close the public hearing you still have time after you close the public hearing to make a determination you can look at the, all the materials again but I, I don't i don't foresee that this process is going to get us anywhere of any sense of unanimity and much of that has to do with the results of it that's why well i i think what we're, you know what's going to happen as I see it, and I don't know, we'll wait and see what the board says, is that we, we get a peer review done. And if they agree with Marianne, then, then like you say, there'll be other reports coming back out. But in that case, once we do the third, as far as I see it, we should vote. And if, it, if it's the uh, same as Marianne's uh, outcome on the uh, review of the area, then whatever else comes out there, the other groups have a right to appeal to DEP and then it goes to DEP and that's it. But we've done our part and uh, I, I don't know what else we can do. I think that that's pretty much it. We, you know, we're just spending way too much time on this. Want another um, public comment? Um, Louis, can I speak before you take public comment? Okay, Tim. Um, yeah, I, I think we could conceivably move forward. I wanted to ask a question of Casey because Casey Warren, because she she wrote this draft. First, we have to approve the draft RFQ because we just basically got it. Um, and I, I again, I I agree with the applicant. We, it would have been nice if we could have had it sooner, but um, that's the situation we're in. So um, when I read the RFQ, they actually reference freshwater wetland services material in the Depento report, but it's not included because I'm not sure why. So if the report that we're gonna have somebody review references documents, those documents would seem to me to be necessary to be part of the review. but um, that's a question for Casey and also for our legal counsel, because I agree, we probably, when, when we get a 25 page legal document at 2.30 in the afternoon that tells us that the, that the, the answers are before us, um, then I, I think the town council should tell us, yeah, the answers are before us. Um, so if Casey could respond to that question, um, and then we can decide on whether we accept this RFQ, whether we want to modify it and let's make a vote on it and get it out of here. Uh, Pete Law, just real quick, Louie. Uh, yeah. uh, Tim, that does reference that other study. And, and I think there's also a lot of ambiguity in the initial uh, application of what the area represents. Does it include the right of way? Does it not? So um, that might be something for the RFQ that we have to look at as well, Casey. But um, that's, I don't want to get into the, to the, to the weeds here. <laughs> excuse me, fun on the Conservation Commission uh, hearing about getting the weeds, but um, there's some other details that we want to have review, and I think some of the other stuff is applicable, as Tim suggested. As far as attachments, Tim, if I missed that, I apologize. Generally, I try to make a list, but I didn't in this case because I had uh, some of the, some of my other projects are pretty heavy. Absolutely. Thing right now because of COVID. So um, if there's something that I miss that you want to draw my attention to, just send me an email and I'll make an adjustment to that. If there's language that you want changed, I mean, it doesn't have to be this. This is an example. Um, I just want to be very careful about 
um, how the, or that the information is presented so that what you get back is, is useful. That was my intent. Yes, thank you. Louis, one more comment, Tim Hilchey. Yep, Tim. Uh, the other thing that, I think the other reason why maybe we've had some confusion about this is because we know based on what we've been presented that the driveway is going to go through the right of way in some place. And if it's moved northerly, it's gonna go through the center of what's been identified as containing potentially jurisdictional wetlands. So that's, and the way that the uh, RDA request was written, as we discussed last meeting, is a little unclear. So um, I'm perfectly happy if we want to um, tweak, these, tweak the language and make the attachments that are necessary to attach and then get this submitted and, and instruct Casey to, to submit it to people, you know, so that we can get this moving. Okay, Mark. Um, you know, let me be clear. I, I respect each and every one of you as volunteers for the time and effort you put in for the good of the town. So don't take this personally, but based upon the way this discussion is going, and what appears to be nothing short of a morass that this peer review is going to be, the applicant objects to it and isn't willing to pay for it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, well, um, where does that leave us, Louis Tin Hilchi? Where does that leave us? Yes, we'll have to. Uh, I'll have to talk with Casey and the have her talk with the town council on that. Because uh, I'm not sure if there is a state law. I think, you know, that the applicant is uh, required to uh, pay for a peer review. So I'm, I'm not sure on all that. We've always never had a problem. And uh, so, Tim? Could I make a suggestion then? Um, since obviously, um, Tim Hilchey, uh, obviously since the, the applicant, uh, applicant's attorney, Mark Donahue, suggested that they're unwilling to pay for this, I, I would suggest that in the interest of saving them some time, um, that I make a motion to continue this hearing until we can get um, input from town council uh, with regard to how we should proceed with the peer review. Maybe there's a point where we can actually agree that the applicant will pay for a peer review. Um, but I think we do need to get town council to tell us. So again, the motion is to continue the hearing. I, I didn't even realize it was quote a public hearing. I thought it was just a meeting, but um, if it is a public hearing, um, let's continue it. And uh, so that's my first motion. Uh, I'll second it, Louis Mission. When it caught, uh, just a point before you do that, Louis, I believe this is a meeting. We receive yeah. meeting agendas and meetings, not a hearing. It's just a point of clarity. Yeah, it's, it's a regular time, you know, a regular meeting. Right. A, a legal clarification there. Um, so if we could redo the motion as being a, uh, for the meeting versus the hearing. Okay, so I'll offer a new motion to continue the meeting, um, uh, discussion of the RDA until the following meeting, which, um, we could set an earlier date, but uh, if that's in the interest of the application, but traditionally we take the last Thursday of the month, which would be October 29, but uh, in the interest of moving it forward, I'm willing to consider an, any other date. Well, usually, usually it's the fourth, fourth uh, Thursday of the month, which is the so 22nd. The 22nd. 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 So, yeah. I'll, yes, Mark? Well, the applicant is very comfortable with the commission making its determination on the determination of applicability based upon the record before it. We're very comfortable with whatever your decision is based upon that information before you. We are not agreeing to any further continuation. Oh. So, um, Louis, Bill Mayer, PC. Yeah. Um, I just would like to make a statement that I think at this point, um, 
my recommendation, my motion would be to go forward with what the motion on the table uh, that I do believe that we need, um, we need now need town council's uh, involvement in this. So I would like to um, uh, continue our discussion of the motion on the table, which would be to continue the meeting uh, until our next meeting, which will be October 22nd. Hi, this is Jennifer Gannett. <clears throat> I just want to say that October 22nd is the date of our, oops, um, our special town meeting. Oh, okay. So. Would we be able, able to meet on the 15th? No, that, Casey, no? Who said no? Don't we have another meeting that night or um, not? I don't see it on my calendar, but that doesn't mean that we don't like, cause I'm just on my, my cell phone. I don't have my. Actually, I think you might be right. Um, there, there might be conflicting meetings there. Yeah, um, I have so many meetings that it's, I'd have to look. I don't think, Tim Hilchig, again, I don't think necessarily that it's gonna take town council very long to answer our questions. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? No. No, but I would just make the motion that we have to discontinue the discussion until we uh, have further discussion with town council on how we should proceed. Okay, well, that's a better motion than mine, and I'm, I'm willing to remove my motion and second yours. All, all those in favor say aye, Louis yep. Mission. Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayor PC, aye. Lie. You'll note for the record the applicant's objection to the continuation. Yes, thank you. Was it the 15th that I hear as a con conclusion? There was the. No, there's no conclusion. We, we decided to stop discussion until we have council input. The t how about the 29th? That's a Thursday. Excuse me, Louis. I just Pete Logan. Yep. I think we decided that we we're not going to continue the discussion until we had council input. So no, I mean just just for our next meeting. Oh, for a general meeting. Okay. Yes. Well, that's something we can set at the end of the end of the end of this meeting. Okay. So let me get this straight for the for the record. You're continuing this matter without telling the applicant when it's going to be heard again. Louis, we, Go ahead, Tim. ordinarily we would meet on the 22nd. We suggested some earlier dates, but there are conflicts with them. If the 29th is a date that we need to set now, um, then we can set a meeting on October 29th, which is the fifth Thursday of October. Are there any meetings that conflict with this, Jennifer Gannett or Casey Warren? Not that I know of at this moment. I have to look at my work count. I mean, it's, it's not on here now. So, I mean, we could set it as that date. I don't see a conflict right now, Tim and Louie. Okay, we will continue to the 29th of October. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's see, I guess we missed uh, got a hand up. I don't know if we can, we, we Close the meeting on this, so. Okay. Sorry, Tolly. Okay. So, Louis, if. Yes, uh, Tim. I don't um, know if uh, we'll, we'll continue to. We won't be discussing any more of this about this RDA tonight. Is that correct? No. Okay. No. So no. A motion has been made. It's been seconded. It's been voted. So we we will not continue conversation about. It. Okay. But we got to continue with a regular business yeah. here. Uh, the minutes. Did anybody? Uh, everybody review the minutes. I did, and uh, 
I didn't um, identify anything. Tim helps you. I, I read the minutes and I didn't identify anything that was, I thought they were very thorough. Good job, Bill. Yeah, the only, the only thing uh, I want to uh, bring up is, and it wasn't on the minutes, it, sh it should be. Usually when we uh, do a negative determination, we put the number down. And, yes, I did notice that. Huh? I didn't notice that, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, and so I had, we had mentioned uh, uh, for Frontier, a negative number two. And Mark, Mark looked over the uh, RDA or our, uh, our uh, whatever, whatever, our determination there, and he suggested that it it should be uh, a number three, a negative number three. So I had Sue change that, and I talked to the applicant. And he was fine with that. There really isn't much of a difference other than the wording is the negative number three is it's a buffer zone. And that's pretty much applies better than the number two. So I just, you know, just wanted to tell you that. We, there are a couple of areas, Louis, um, where there's in, in the RDA for map 151, there's a, a plus RDA so is that another place where we need a number? Uh, a plus? Yeah, it says in the second item under the minutes, um, the third bulleted point, Louis motion to provide a positive RDA accepting what, is that just shorthand for positive uh, or is it supposed to be positive number finding? Yeah, a, a positive RDA, which then would, um, uh, as the applicant stated, um, would require the notice of intent for any further work, um, positive determination. Um, so that's yeah. why I use the, the positive yes. sign there. Yeah, so it's a positive, good. it's positive two way. Okay. Okay. So, um, Bill Mayor of PC again, so I'm, I'm listening to this just so that we can make sure with regards to the minutes that that I'm, um, I'm capturing it correctly. Um, uh, so Louis has made a motion to edit the minutes um, to reflect a negative uh, or negative number three for Frontier Regional School. Yes. Okay. And is there anything further? Are there any other? Because I'm just kind of... Louis, you also mentioned that in the second one that it should say a positive 2A. I believe that's what... I believe that's what we uh let's see if I can find that. Let's see. Kind of Now, what did we have? I don't, I don't have the minutes right here at the moment. Um, I looked at them and... So I have the minutes open. Uh, oops. Uh, so as soon as my computer... Does it have a positive number? Uh, um, I, I'm, so I have a slight delay. Yeah, 
Yeah, this, it, there was a positive number 2A that I think with the boundary delineation, because we went out there, they had it delineated and resource area described on the reference plans are confirmed as accurate. Therefore, the resource area boundaries confirm in this determination are binding as all decisions rendered pursuant to the wetland protection and it's regarding such boundaries as long as the determination is valid. So what okay, we're saying, so what we're saying is that there's wetlands out there and they're going to have to, if they do any work, they'll have to, they'll have to come before us with a notice of intent. Okay. So Louis, Tim Hilchie, just to clarify, yeah. All we all we want to do is make a motion to amend the minutes of, in number on the, under number two RDA map one fifty one to say in the third line Louis motion to provide a positive two A RDA accepting wetland boundaries. Yes. I second that motion. If I can all do right. that. All right. So uh, the motion then has been. It's Bill Mayer, PC. The motion's been made by Tim Hilchie um, uh, to um, amend the minutes of August 27th, 2020 to change um, for, for the Frontier Regional School track replacement to change it to a negative number three RDA determination and to amend for the uh, lot Map map one fifty one lot one to change it to a positive two a. That's correct. correct. All correct. right. So that, that was made by Tim, seconded by Louis. And All in favor. Captured by Bill. All in favor, Louis Mission, aye. Tim Elchi, aye. He lied. Bill Mayor PC, aye. Okay. Any other? Anything else on the minutes there? Or I think everything else looked pretty good. Did we have any mail or anything? For I think that was the last thing on the agenda. So any? Uh, I think there was something there that uh, came that somebody just advised us to check with Mark Stinson on, uh, you know, getting help for any of these these uh, questions on RDAs and notice of intents. Okay, I think that was it for the agenda then, uh, so thank you. Yeah, and uh, okay, just uh, just an update and, on, uh, and we're almost done. Just an update that I did get a, a notice, I got a call from uh, Yankee Candle building parking lot on North Street, the construction. And they they uh, they did uh, inform me on 910 that they were gonna start work in the parking lot on 914 and the uh, siltation and everything was already in place. So that was just, uh, you know, letting us know that they were gonna work on it. And they were working on it, I rolled by, but I haven't stopped to take a look. It's pretty straightforward. It's going to be an improvement, whatever they're doing there. And the only other thing, in case someone asked you or questioned you, is uh, Sandy Lord on 16 uh, Kelleher Drive uh, called and uh, was wondering about uh, cutting some tree limbs that are hanging over her house. And uh, they're in the, uh, like a drainage swale next to her house. And I told her there was no problem as long as they're not removing any trees. And so just uh, doing some trim work around the house. So if anybody asks you or mentions it to you, I just wanted to bring that up. I gave the okay. So uh, I guess uh, I don't think there's anything else there. We don't have any comments to make on any of the, from the zoning or planning that I know of. 
so I guess uh, we we'll set the date for the next meeting on uh, October 29th then, 2020. That works. Yep, works fine. Go <coughs> Mayor PC. So uh, let's see. Okay, it's 8.50 and uh, I move to adjourn the meeting. Oh no, we haven't finished, that's right. Are we going to do something with those uh, with, for that peer review uh, submittal there? Here's Tim, or um, I think or did you want to wait on that? I think that we we decided that we were going to get council to town. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Yep. So, okay then. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, just to step away real quick. Um, what was the decision on that to wait till council? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah. So I, I move that, you know, it's 8.50 and I move that we uh, adjourn the meeting. I'll second that motion. I'll, Bill I'll Mayor PC. All in favor, Louis Mission, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Eli. Bill Mayor PC, aye.